Cycle syncing. Do we do we know? I don't know. Most of the women they know what cycle syncing is. Um, cycle syncing uh, is what we're going to talk about today. It's according to your menstruation cycle management of your exercise and diet, right? So anyway, I'm not an expert, as you know that. I just bring these topics and 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 experts every single day, so that all of us can learn together. So um, today I have a holistic nutritionist, Nicole, and she's going to educate us about what cycle thinking is. So hang on for one second when I just let her come. All right. Set is, is a holistic nutritionist and she is going to educate us about what cycle thinking is. Hi, Nicole, how are you? Hi. I'm doing really well, thank you. How are you? Great, great. You know, I didn't know what cycle thinking is, so I'm really thankful to you for coming and educating all of us about what cycle thinking is. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Great. So, so Nicole, uh, you are a holistic nutritionist. Maybe you can tell us a little bit on how you got into the cycle thinking. Sure. Um, so I've always loved nutrition and cooking and all of that. So I started uh, my journey into becoming a nutritionist. And around that time, I actually went off of birth control, which I had been on since I was 16. Mm -hmm. um, and I really... I started to learn a lot more about my body, about how I was feeling um, with my true hormones. And it really led me into the direction of finding out how to support my body through my cycle, not just during my period, um, but throughout the whole cycle. And it opened these doors that I couldn't even, it, it was crazy to me because like you said, you didn't know what cycle syncing was. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not something that women are often taught about, mm -hmm. but it makes such a big difference. And I feel like a lot of women, the more women that I talk to, um, the more it shows how little we know about our cycles mm -hmm. and the stigma potentially around it and just the lack of information that could be so beneficial for so many people. Mm -hmm. And as I look back on, on when I was an adolescent, when I was younger and going through all of these hormonal changes, mm -hmm. how beneficial it really would have been for me to understand how my cycle was working. So yeah. I could realize that all of these hormone fluctuations and the way that I was feeling and feeling down at certain points and feeling unproductive or having brain fog was because of my cycle and not just um, because of me. So it gave me a lot of freedom in understanding that. And then also through um, just understanding and getting to know my body better and supporting myself through my cycle to make those hormonal fluctuations not as bad to make me feel a lot better, to make my body feel a lot better. So it was, it was very interesting to open all of those doors. And my mission here is just to share that and allow other women to be empowered through their cycle instead of working against it. Now, I think it's beautiful. I did a little bit of research because, you know, when you said you were talking on cycle seeking, I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> so I went online and, and I know and I saw that um, a functional nutritionist, Alyssa Witt, she, Witty, I think, sorry, is she's the one who coined this term on cycle thinking, right? The concept of eating and exercising according to your cycle. So explain us what happens in a body, like the three different phases and what, what the women should do managing those phases, right? Sure, sure. Um, of course, it's always different for different women because a lot of women have um, hormonal irregulations. Mm -hmm. um, so just generally, um, mm -hmm. what the cycle pretty much is, it's not just your period phase. That's the beginning of your cycle. Mm -hmm. um, but then you go through about two weeks and that's when you hit ovulation, which is when your body's actually releasing the egg. Mm -hmm. And that's the time that you'll feel a lot more energized, creative, clear, uh, you might be glowing. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it uh, goes into your luteal phase, which mm -hmm. is um, when your body starts to release a lot more progesterone um, mm -hmm. and decreases in estrogen. And mm -hmm. that's when you might start feeling a little bit lower, go down. You're not making as much serotonin. Mm -hmm. um, and then your cycle starts again. <laughs> um, that's very brief, of course. Um, yeah. So I guess in the, the first half of your cycle is when your estrogen begins to rise, it peaks, and a lot of the other uh, hormones involved, so LH and FSH, um, those also peak around ovulation and then they dip again. Um, so especially in the front half of your uh, cycle, so the follicular phase, mm -hmm. um, that's when you have your period, 
and then the rest of the follicular phase. Mm -hmm. And during that time, because your, your estrogen is increasing so much, yeah. um, you really want to support your body's ability to metabolize that estrogen. So incorporating foods such as fermented foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, miso, mm -hmm. um, is really important, as well as cruciferous vegetables, um, because they contain a compound called idols, um, mm -hmm. which also helps support your body's metabolism of estrogen. And cruciferous mm -hmm. vegetables are things like uh, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, all of those. Um, and then when you when you're hitting ovulation, your body's producing a lot of these hormones, right? So all of those hormones have to be filtered by your liver. Mm -hmm. And during that time, it's super important to support your liver in consuming a lot of anti-inflammatory foods. So mm -hmm. ginger, turmeric, uh, berries with antioxidants, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you're falling into your luteal phase, again, mm -hmm. that's where you're going to get a lot of the PMSing symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. So that time you want to incorporate things that are higher in um, really beneficial amino acids because mm -hmm. there's certain amino acids that your body, um, the good bacteria in your gut produces uh, serotonin and mm -hmm. melatonin. So a lot of people don't know that 90 to 90 percent of serotonin is actually made in your gut by your microbiome mm -hmm. as well as about 50 percent of dopamine mm -hmm. so those are your happy hormones those are your sleep regulating hormones mm -hmm. those are your exciting hormones so you really want to incorporate as many things in that phase uh, okay. to really support that so that's that's things like anything that contains tryptophan um which is so pumpkin seeds mm -hmm. and uh, poultry, turkey specifically, is really, really good for that. Um, as well, because your body is, is going through those PMSing symptoms, and that can also affect your digestive system as well. Um, mm -hmm. That's where you're going to get a lot of cravings. Um, and it's funny because a lot of the cravings are because you don't have enough serotonin. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another reason why the amino acids are really important. Mm -hmm. um, but also, uh, especially fiber, mm -hmm. high protein and fiber during that phase is essential um, mm -hmm. because that will lower the incidence of, of cravings. That will help your digestive system flow a little bit better. Um, and you'll just, you'll get a lot of benefits, especially during that time to really up your fiber intake and really up your protein intake. Mm -hmm. um, and then especially a little bit before your period, as well as during that phase, your period mm -hmm. phase, it's really, really important that women get enough um, iron mm -hmm. um, because iron is, is the oxygen carrier through your blood. Mm -hmm. And uh, during your period, you actually might be losing about two milligrams of iron per day. Mm -hmm. So that's why, especially during that time, iron is super essential. Wow, there's so much information. And so much <laughs> I hope so it was easy to you need to be running these programs. I'm telling you, amazing, amazing information. And someone Thanks. just said, uh, I hope this is a save. Yes, we are saving it for sure. With <laughs> gratitude from the, you know, and, and you can uh, see this session after that. So what about the exercise, right? The so exercise also should be regulated according to the three phases. Yeah, yes. So exercise especially is very interesting. So you should always be exercising. The standard is about 150 minutes of vigorous exercise per week. Mm -hmm. um, and especially for women and women with metabolic disorders like PCOS, it's super important to allow your body to rest. Mm -hmm. um, because if you if you have if you're constantly exercising, a lot of women believe potentially that, you know, that whole um, calories in versus calories out thing mm -hmm. um, that is so pervasive in the fitness world. And that can actually be really detrimental for a lot of women because they believe that they have to do all of this cardio and high intensity exercise and just keep going and keep going and just burn as many calories as possible. But that's likely doing the exact opposite thing that you want it to, yeah. right? Because when you're doing that, you're spiking your cortisol levels, which is your stress hormone. Mm -hmm. And you're not allowing them to come back down. And when you're, um, when you're spiking these cortisol levels, that yeah. can be responsible for a lot of the abdominal fat that a lot of women have. Mm -hmm. um, and it also hinders your regulation of your reproductive hormones. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really essential to bring those back down a little bit. Um, that's just a general standard yeah. Yeah. Um, as well. So so during each phase is a little bit different, right? Of course. So during your period, you might feel a lot more lethargic 
you might be more tired. Um, and so it's important to, to listen to your body in that kind of respect, you know, do the yeah. yoga, do the Pilates, do the mm -hmm. strength training. That's like a lot easier for your body. Um, and then as estrogen is rising, this is a super, super interesting fact. Estrogen has been shown to improve muscle function, mm -hmm. but to make ligaments a little bit weaker. So it's super interesting that during that time, a lot of women actually struggle with um, injury because oh. they continue to go really hard, but because mm -hmm. of the estrogen in their body, um, their ligaments aren't as, as stiff. So that can cause a lot of injury. So mm -hmm. it's super, super important, especially during um, your later follicular phase into mm -hmm. your earlier luteal phase to really pay attention to the, mo the motions and the movements that you're doing mm -hmm. um, and to stretch properly, to warm up properly so mm -hmm. that you avoid, um, so that you're avoiding injury. Mm -hmm. So that's super, super important. Um, and then again, going, and that's also, especially during um, your ovulatory phase. So yeah. between the later follicular, earlier luteal phase, that's probably when you're going to have a lot more energy. You're going to have a little bit more stamina. You're going to be able to go just a little bit further. So it's yeah. a great time to try out new exercise routines, to do things that are a little bit more creative, maybe like a dance class or boxing class so it's a little bit more um, uppity and fun and you're really utilizing the extra energy that you have mm -hmm. um, and then as you're going into your luteal phase uh, your progesterone is rising your uh, estrogen is a little bit lower that's a great time to do real good strength training because mm -hmm. that tightens up your ligaments and your joints a little bit so you can potentially you know lift a little bit heavier or mm -hmm. go a little bit further with your heavier workouts. Mm -hmm. um, so that's super important. And then again, just to continue to always be moving to support your body, um, because exercise has been shown to help regulate hormones, to help regulate insulin receptors. Um, and a lot of women who especially have metabolic issues, insulin is a huge, huge factor um, mm -hmm. that should really always be at the forefront of their mind because that affects everything um so to make sure that you're continuing to um support your body uh through exercise and maintain some vigorous exercise but also to listen to your body is really important throughout yeah no i think i think you've already laid down the framework and it's so amazing well what you said is so true because we all all of us women we try to push ourselves right and and i know i'm guilty of that too and i had frozen shoulder you know the injury that you're talking about and now of course you're not able to lift it but to listen to your body to at the end of the day and, and move accordingly is so important mm -hmm. right yeah extremely important and i think that's one of the the biggest things that i've found with cycle syncing mm -hmm. is you're able to support your body in these ways, but you're also able to understand yourself a little bit better and forgive yourself a little bit more. Because like you said, I think women try to go super hard. Um, they're always trying to do more. They're always trying to be at this peak level, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but our bodies aren't necessarily allowing us to do that. And when you're able to detach from, mm -hmm. oh, this is, this is, it's me mm -hmm. rather than it's, something that is going on within my body. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so being able to forgive yourself and give yourself space to feel and to really um, be able to predict and synchronize with your, your cycle is, mm -hmm. is powerful. Yeah. Well, the, the, well, to all the viewers, I see a lot of people joining. We've been talking about cycle syncing according to your uh, menstrual cycles, so for, specifically for women, and amazing information that you have given to all of us, to all the women, you know, make sure anything else you'd like to add before I wrap up, and this is an educational session, session. sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier, so if you have some issues, you, you need to seek out holistic nutritionists like Nicole here, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, please let us know, what, how would you summarize this session? And Well, so like, like we said through the whole thing, I mean, cycle syncing is one very valuable aspect of living a holistically well life. You know what I mean? You should always be supporting your body in, in all of the ways. You should always be listening to your body. But cycle syncing is a tool and a method that will help you um, kind of realign, connect, better predict and synchronize with your body to mm -hmm. really achieve your ultimate health. 
um, and really get those hormones in line and be able to thrive. Another thing about cycle syncing that's really cool is is the um, business aspect of things. Like I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. So, so even just to know when to have business meetings or when you might wanna do a little bit more administrative things because you have a little bit more brain fog during your later luteal phase and your period. So it's really, really interesting how you can connect your whole your whole life and your whole system to your cycle. So the only thing I would say, if, if anyone is is interested in learning more, come over to my page. Let's connect. Um, I love to talk. I love to share information. Um, I am taking on a few more clients at the, at the moment. So if anybody's interested in a more one-on-one -on -one approach, I'm available. Um, but yeah, it was really Thank cool. you. Thank you so much, Nicole. I think it's a fascinating topic. A lot of us women, they just don't even understand what cycle syncing is. So learn about cycle syncing. We are bringing new topics to help all of us live better. So yes. with that, yeah, with that, I'd like to wrap up this session. Thank you so much, Nicole. For Thank you for having me. Absolutely. An amazing, amazing session for all the women out there and help us spread this word. Um, I think this is an amazing topic. Thank you. With that. Thank you. Take care. Bye -bye.